Hey, what's going on, guys? Tanmay here for Simple Snippets, and let's continue with our pattern printing program. And as the title of the video suggests, today we are going to understand what is the Pascal triangle and how to print the values in a Pascal triangle. So, Pascal triangle, as the name suggests, was given by the famous mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal. He was a French mathematician, and what this Pascal triangle is is that it corresponds to the coefficients of a binomial expression. Okay. So this is the Pascal triangle. This is how it looks like, and we will start with naming the row number from zero. This as one, this as two, then three, and four. So we have five rows, but we are starting its naming from zero, and I'll tell you why we do that. So a little bit of background of this triangle. As I mentioned, this triangle gives us the coefficients of a binomial expression. So what does that mean? So taking you back to a little bit of basics of algebra. Remember we had this formula which was a plus b the whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square so this is the formula for a binomial expression with a power 2 so if you come to this third row which is depicted by 2 because we started with 0 you can see 1 2 1 are the exact same coefficients of the three individual elements over here so th the coefficient of a square is 1 the coefficient of this element is 2 and the coefficient of b square is again 1 i hope you know what is coefficients similarly if you take a binomial expression with the formula a plus b the whole cube the formula is given by a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube and again if you see the coefficients for the first term it is 1 then for this term it is 3 then for this term it is 3 and then again 1 so 1 3 3 1 and if you come on to the third row that is the fourth row depicted by number 3 you have these same coefficients 1 3 3 1 similarly if you want to calculate the formula for a plus b the whole raised to 4 you will have all the terms with the coefficients something like 1 4 6 4 1 okay so this is what pascal triangles gives us it gives us the coefficients of the binomial expression depending upon which power it is raised to all right now if you want to know a little bit more i will drop some links in the video description to let you know a little bit more about the theory on pascal triangle but our goal our intention today is to print this pascal triangle using c++ programming language okay so now let's start off with talking about pascal triangle and how we can print it so below over here we have the loop and the code which will print this kind of triangle but a little bit of recap in the previous tutorial of this pattern printing programs playlist we printed this full triangle or full pyramid and this is the code for that so for those who have already watched that there are going to be lot of similar things when it comes to printing pascal triangle that is the code of pascal triangle but for those who haven't watched it no worries we are going to obviously dry run this entire code right from the beginning we are going to track each and every variable values and draw the diagram on the command prompt so we will have a digital blackboard and using graphics we will draw it also so make sure you watch this video till the end and at the end of the video we will run this code and see the live working that is the practical side okay but quickly comparing the two patterns the first for loop the outer for loop is going to be exactly the same you can see we are starting with int i equals to 1 i has to be less than equal to n n is the number of rows that you want to be printing so over here we have five number of rows right 1 2 3 4 and 5 so n is going to be 5 depending upon what the user enters and we are saying i plus plus so the outer for loop again in most triangle printing patterns is going to be equal to the number of rows that are supposed to be printed so this is going to be the same inside this the only difference is that we are creating a integer variable coefficient which will actually be calculating these values so inside this the coefficient will be initialized one with every iteration so every outer for loop iteration the coefficient variable will be created and it will be given assigned a value of 1 and this will happen in every iteration that is because if you observe the triangle it starts off with value 1 every time right so we are going to print this coefficient later on so as we move inside we have another for loop which is exactly the same like this for loop and this first inner for loop is used to create extra space onto the command prompt so you can see this extra space which is being created that has to be created onto the command prompt and we have to write code for that so we will talk about this but that is also exactly the same like 
the triangle pattern one over here and the only difference is where the second for loop is that is the inner second for loop where the printing happens over here we are simply printing star and a space but over here we need to do the calculations to get these numbers so the conditions are going to be the same but we are printing the coefficient first and then we are using this formula which is the most important one over here we are saying coefficient is equal to coefficient star i minus j divided by j so i and j are nothing but the iterators in the individual for loops and we will talk about why we are using i minus j by directly dry running them so that we understand the calculations and then again the for loop will run and again the new coefficient value will be printed all right okay so a little bit of overview is done let's actually start with the dry running of the pascal's triangle so let's start off with the first outer for loop we are saying int i equals to 1 so let's write i equals to 1 and we are saying i is less than equal to n and as i mentioned is the number of rows that we want to print let's assume n equals to be 5 this is something that we will take from the user and once the user enters the number of rows it is obviously going to be constant so let's assume phi is going to be constant in this case we want phi rows of pascal triangle all right now the condition here is i is less than equal to n and i plus plus which means i will have values 1 2 3 4 and 5 correct these are the possible values i will take in this outer for loop starting from 1 and it will go till 5 because we are saying i plus plus and it will go till 5 because it has to be less than or equal to n what is n n is 5 so i has to be less than or equal to 5 and till then the for loop will run so basically it will run 5 times correct and this makes sense right as i mentioned the outer for loop basically runs depending upon the number of rows so if you have 6 rows it will run 6 times if you have 7 it will have 7 iterations and so on and so forth okay let's move inside because i is 1 and is i less than n or less than equal to n yes i is 1 which is less than equal to 5 so it is true i will take the possible values 1 2 3 4 and 5 so once we go inside we create this int coefficient equals to 1 let's create that coef equals to 1 now we proceed with the first inner for loop now the first inner for loop as i mentioned is used to create blank spaces now if this is your command prompt you can see that there is this triangle space blank space which we have to programmatically create and we will create it over here consider this as our command prompt right now so we will say int k equals to n minus i so why did we do that so we'll say k equals to n minus i what is n n is 5 what is i i is 1 so 5 minus 1 is going to be equal to 4 correct so initially we need 4 blank spaces 1 2 3 4 and then we want to print one value so k will be equal to 4 and k has to be greater than 0 in the condition so 4 has to be greater than 0 and we are saying k minus minus so this inner for loop will go from 4 3 2 and 1 correct so it will run for 4 times and once it runs for four times after it becomes zero it will stop working so in every iteration what it is doing it is simply printing this extra space that is this blank space so let's print that initially we will be at the very first line of the command prompt so our cursor will be over here so first blank space second third and fourth so after running four times this for loop will stop working we will proceed with the next inner for loop now this is where the actual value is being printed so here we have one more variable j so we are saying j equals to 1 we start with 1 and we are saying j has to be less than equal to i what is the value of i i is also 1 is 1 less than equal to 1 yes and we are saying j plus plus so this will run only one time because in the next iteration j will become 2 and then 2 will not be less than or equal to 1 correct but let's go inside with the first iteration we are saying c out coefficient what is the coefficient value it is 1 so let's print 1 over here all right 1 is printed after this we use the formula coefficient is equal to coefficient star i minus j divided by j so what is i and what is j i and j both are equal to 1 so i minus j is 1 minus 1 which will be 0 now 0 divided by j is going to be 0 0 multiplied by this coefficient is going to be 0 and then the coefficient value will become 0 okay all right after this we will again go to the start of the for loop and now j will become 2 because j plus plus but when j becomes 2 is 2 less than equal to i what is the value of i still i is still 1 
is to less than equal to one no so this means this second inner for loop will stop working you will come outside and you will say see out end l which means that you will be taken to the new line this end l is nothing but a command in c++ which takes you to the new line also do note that this is a c++ code but if you're using any other general purpose programming language like javascript or java the logic and the for loop conditions are going to be the same okay all right after this end l you'll come at the start of the for loop and now i will become 2 so when i becomes 2 n is obviously going to be 5 we'll go inside again the coefficient will be created and it will be assigned the value 1 now we will proceed with the inner for loop the first inner for loop we'll say k equals to n minus i n is 5 5 minus i i has become 2 so 5 minus 2 is going to be 3 so this time k will be equal to 3 3 and the condition is 3 has to be greater than 0 and k minus minus which means k will take the value 3 to 1 which means it will run 3 times and what it will do 3 times it will simply create 3 blank spaces because in the second iteration that is the second row we only want 3 blank spaces so let's create 3 blank spaces all right three blank spaces are created this for loop will stop working we will proceed now we will say j equals to one j has to be less than equal to i what is the value of i now i is two so is one less than equal to two yes so you'll go inside you will print coefficient so you'll say see out coefficient what is the value inside coefficient it is one so you've printed that now after printing that you are also printing a blank space so don't forget that so a blank space is also printed over here also a blank space will be printed but this will have no effect onto the overall structure of the triangle but this blank space is printed over here you can see after that the next instruction you will say coefficient is equal to coefficient whose value is 1 star i minus j what is i i is 2 what is j j is 1 divide by j j is again 1 so 1 divided by 1 is 1 and 1 star 1 is going to be ultimately equal to 1. So coefficient value will remain 1 only. Alright. After this again you will come at the start of the inner for loop. J will become J plus plus J will become 2. Now again the condition will be checked. Is 2 less than equal to I which is also 2. Yes. 2 is equal to 2. So condition is true. So again you will go inside. You will print coefficient value. The value is still 1 of coefficient. And you will also print a space over here after that again coefficient will be calculated this time i minus j i is 2 j is 2 so i minus j is 0 so the whole ultimate value is going to be 0 correct after this you'll come at the start of the for loop you'll say j plus plus j will become 3 now when j becomes 3 this condition becomes false because 3 is not less than equal to 2 i is still 2 right so then you'll exit outside this second inner for loop and you'll say c out end l you will come on to the next line after this you will go to the start of the for loop i will now become 3 so i has become 3 you will go inside again coefficient value will become 1 this is where the coefficient is recreated every time then you will proceed with the very first inner for loop this time it will run only two times i am not explaining the working every time i am guessing you guys have got the hang of it so k will be 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 so 2, 2 has to be greater than 0 and 2k minus minus. So only 2 blank spaces will be printed. Then you will move out with the second inner for loop. For the second inner for loop, j will be 1. j has to be less than or equal to i and i is this time 3. So is 1 less than or equal to 3? Yes, you will go inside, you will print coefficient. What is the value of coefficient? It is 1. And you will also print a blank space. Now the second instruction is where you calculate the formula again. So coefficient is 1 star what is i minus j i is 3 j is 1 so 2 divided by j what is the value of j 1 so 2 divided by 1 is 2 2 star 1 is 2 this time the coefficient value now will be stored is 2 okay now after this again you'll go to the start of the for loop j will become plus plus so j will become 2 is 2 less than equal to 3 yes because i is 3 so you will again go inside this time you will again print the value this time the coefficient value is 2 so now you print 2 along with 2 you will also print a blank space this is that blank space then again coefficient value will be calculated it will be given by 2 star 
वट इज आई माइनस जे दिस टाइम आई इज थ्री माइनस जे जे इज टू डिवाइड बाय जे वॉट इज जे अगेन टू सो दिस विल बी अल्टीमेटली टू इंटू वन डिवाइड बाय टू सो टू इंटू हाफ विच मीन्स दैट अल्टीमेटली द न्यू वैल्यू दैट इज स्टोर्ड इन कोफिशेंट इज अगेन गोइंग टू बी वन सो आफ्टर दिस अगेन यूल कम एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द फॉर लूप जे विल बिकम प्लस प्लस जे विल बिकम थ्री इज थ्री लेस देन इक्वल टू थ्री येस इट इज इक्वल टू थ्री सो अगेन यूल गो इन साइड द फॉर लूप यूल प्रिंट द कोफिशेंट वैल्यू दिस टाइम द कोफिशेंट वैल्यू इज बिकम वन सो इल प्रिंट वन एंड देन अ ब्लैंक स्पेस then you'll again calculate the coefficient and this time of course you'll get zero so let's not calculate that you'll go to the start of the for loop j will become 4 when j becomes 4 this condition becomes false because 4 is not less than equal to 3 i is still 3 so you'll exit out you'll say see out end l and then you'll move to the next line okay so so far you can see after three iterations we have pretty much got our result halfway we are getting the similar pattern so we got 1 then we got 1 1 then we got 1 to 1 so let's quickly do the remaining calculations first i will now become 4 so when i becomes 4 you'll go inside the first instruction the coefficient value becomes 1 then you proceed k is equal to n minus i which is 5 minus 4 which is 1 so only one blank space will be printed because this for loop will execute only once creating only one blank space then you will proceed when you proceed you will say j equals to 1 j has to be less than equal to i i is nothing but 4 so j will take the values 1 2 3 and 4 which means it will run four times for the first time you will say see out coefficient the value is 1 so you will print 1 and then a blank space then the coefficient will be recalculated so it will be given by 1 star i minus j This time i is four, j is one, so three divided by what is again j one. So this time coefficient value is going to be three. After this, the first iteration is done. You will proceed with the second iteration, where j will become two. When j becomes two, you will again go inside because it will take one, two, three, four values, right? So this is the second iteration. Again, you will print the coefficient. Coefficient value is three. So let's print three, and then you will also print a blank space. then again coefficient will be recalculated correct it will be given by coefficient which is 3 star what is i minus j this time i is 4 minus j what is j 4 minus 2 j is 2 divide by what is j it is again 2 so 4 minus 2 is going to be 2 2 divide by 2 is going to be 1 1 star 3 ultimately is going to be 3 only so the coefficient value is going to be 3 as it is after this again you come at the start of the for loop j will become 3 is 3 less than equal to 4 yes so again you'll go inside you'll print out the coefficient and a blank space the coefficient value is still 3 and a blank space is printed then you'll recalculate the coefficient and it will be given by 3 star again i minus j is 4 minus 3 because i is 4 j is 3 so 4 minus 3 is 1 divide by what is j j is 3 So one by three into three is gonna be equal to one. So now the coefficient value is gonna be equal to one. After this, you'll come at the start of the for loop. J will become four. So when J becomes four, is four less than equal to I value, which is also four? Yes, it is equal. So again, you'll go inside and now you'll print the coefficient again. This time you'll print one because that is the coefficient value, and you'll print a blank space, right? After this, j will become five. Five is not less than equal to i, which is four. So you'll exit out. You'll say end l, which is this instruction outside the second inner for loop, and come on to the new line. Then you'll go at the start of the for loop, and now i will become five. Okay. So so far we've got our Pascal's triangle. Only one last iteration is left. Let's quickly do that. When i becomes five, you'll go inside. You'll assign one as the coefficient value, right? Then you'll proceed forward. You'll say k equals to n minus i. N is nothing but five. I is also five, so k will become zero. Is zero greater than zero? No. This means that the this for loop will not even execute. You'll not print any blank spaces. You'll simply jump to the next for loop. Over here we have j equals to one, and j has to be less than equal to i, which is five. So j will take the values one, two, three, four, and five, which means it will run 
फाइव टाइम्स मेक सेंस बिकॉज इन द लास्ट रो वी वॉन्ट फाइव एलिमेंट्स सो लेट्स डू द कैलकुलेशन यूल से सी आउट को इफिशियंट एंड अ ब्लैंक स्पेस राइट नाउ द को इफिशियंट इज वन सो को इफिशियंट इज प्रिंटेड एंड अ ब्लैंक स्पेस देन द को इफिशियंट इज गॉन बी कैलकुलेटेड विच इज गॉन बी गिवन बाय को इफिशियंट विच इज वन स्टार वॉट इज आई माइनस जे i is nothing but 5 j is nothing but 1 so 4 divided by j is again 1 so now the coefficient value is going to be 4 all right so after this we'll come at the start of the for loop j becomes 2 when j becomes 2 you'll go inside the for loop again you'll print the coefficient the coefficient is 4 now so you'll print 4 you'll also print a blank space right so printing coefficient and then a blank space and the coefficient will now be recalculated which will be given by the formula so 4 star what is i minus j this time j is 2 so 5 minus 2 is 3 3 divided by j so 3 by 2 so 4 into 3 by 2 so 2 ones are and 2 twos are so 2 into 3 is going to be 6 so this time the coefficient value is going to be equal to 6 okay After this, you will come at the start of the for loop. Then j will become three. Let's write three over here. So j is now three. You'll go inside because the valid values for j is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm not checking the values again and again. These are the valid values. So you'll go inside. You'll print the coefficient six and a blank space. Then the coefficient will be recalculated. So six star i minus j, which is five minus three, is going to be two. Divide by j. J is nothing but three. So six into two by three. Three ones are three twos are. So two star two, ultimately equal to four. So now the coefficient becomes four. You'll come at the start of the for loop. J will now become four. You'll go inside. You'll print the coefficient and a blank space, which is four, and a blank space. Then you'll recalculate the coefficient with the formula. Four star i minus j is five minus four. Which is one divided by j is four, so four star one by four is going to be equal to one. So that is what will be stored in the new coefficient variable. Then again, you'll go at the start of the for loop. J will become five, which is the last value it will take for this inner for loop. You'll go inside. You'll print the coefficient, and the coefficient is going to be one, and also a blank space. And after this, you will recalculate the coefficient, which will turn out to be zero. It's not really essential, but Yeah, this is the step. Then you'll come at the start of the for loop. J will become six. Is six less than equal to i, which is five? No. So you'll exit out. You'll come to the new line. You'll come at the start of the for loop where i will become six. When i becomes six, is six less than equal to five? Because n is five. No. So this means this entire for loop will exit out, and we have basically got our final answer. So this, my friends, is our Pascal's triangle. Which we printed using this formula and using this for loop structure. Okay, so I hope you've understood how the Pascal's triangle is created using this code. There are other ways to create Pascal's triangle using slightly different code, but this one is the most optimized one. I will drop some links in the video description related to theory of Pascal's triangle and the concept of this Pascal's binomial, as well as other codes also which are not really optimized. But you can go ahead and check that also for your knowledge. But now let's quickly jump to the C++ code ID and run this code and get our Pascal's triangle generated. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, this is our Pascal's triangle code. This is the exact same code which we dry run. But coming down, I have created this function over here at the top. In the int main, we are simply taking the number of levels of the pattern that the user wants. That is the n value. So user enters that num and we pass it into this Pascal's triangle function. Don't worry guys I'm going to be sharing this entire code with you on our official website so you can check the link in the video description I highly recommend that you type the code at least once for the best practice but you can still verify this code and get this code on the official website so this is where we call this function and that's about it let's save this let's go to execute compile and run by the way this is dave c++ id but any other id in fact any other general purpose programming language will also work let's enter 5 hit enter and there you go you can see our pascal triangle is generated let's close this let's go to execute compile and run let's say we want eight levels if i hit enter there you go you can see 
pascal triangle with eight levels is created it's not exactly a triangle that is because in the middle we are getting two digit numbers and the spacing is kind of shifted towards the right but that is how it's going to be when you increase the number of levels but at least the numbers are going to be accurate using those formulas okay all right so this concludes our pascal triangle topic we did the working we did the theory we saw the diagrammatic representation we dry run the entire code and we also completed the practical we saw the program so if you understood this video please give this video a like this pascal triangle is a very famous question let me know in the comments how this video was and if you want any other more patterns do let me know in the video description definitely share this video with your friends as i mentioned this is a important video when it comes to pattern printing programs and thanks for watching see you in the next one peace